What is going on, everybody? Jamie Shaw here on the Absolute Basketball Experience. And in today's Coach's Corner, we bring you Ronnie Hamilton of Ole Miss University. He had a great session uh, today on the uh, screen and roll, uh, working through reads out of the screen and roll and how they develop and progress and practice through the screen and roll and everything. And he had a good Q&A session um, with tons of coaches in there asking great questions and everything. Before we get into it, though, um, ask that you please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. If you would, go ahead and give the thumbs up, like this video. Um, and also, if you would, let us know what type of session, what type of topic you would like to hear from us next. Leave it in the comments below. What offensive concepts, defensive concepts, recruiting, scouting, uh, anything like that, what would you like to hear the coaches talk about next? Please leave it in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this presentation, please feel free to share it across your platforms as well. Uh, the Coach's Corner is live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday each week. Uh, it's a completely free webinar. Uh, for all coaches of all ages, going all the way up from uh, high major uh, division one, all the way down to GAs, all the way down to middle school coaches, AAU coaches, et cetera, et cetera. Everybody, we want you to come. We want everybody to, to know about it and all that kind of stuff. We've got some great presenters every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But without further ado, here is Ronnie Hamilton on the Absolute Basketball Coaches Corner. Thank you guys very much. Thanks again for the intro, and thanks again for the opportunity to uh... – just get on here and have a chance to share a little bit of, of knowledge and some things that I've learned along the way and the things that we do here. And uh, I see some familiar faces and some, some faces that I do not know. So, man, thanks for everybody for, for tuning in. Um, I hope I can just give you guys, if nothing else, one piece of information that's useful for you and your program, you know, going forward. And uh, the thing I would also say before I jump in um, is, you know, I get a chance to share some things, like I said before, that uh, we've done here at Ole Miss and through my time in coaching. And so I, I really appreciate Jamie for that opportunity, but I also want to use this as a time for me to grow as well. Um, and so, man, any questions, uh, any thoughts uh, along the way, man, please feel free to stop and ask. Uh, however, however, Jamie wants to kind of moderate through the chat or just by, by, by asking um, via the Zoom. And please feel welcome because – I'm always trying to learn, and, and that's why I love these formats that we've been able to do uh, in this time of, of, of kind of social distancing. We've still been able to connect as coaches, man, and learn from each other. And so um, you know, that, that's, that's kind of been the, the greatest uh, thing that I've seen or, or been able to kind of be a part of in this, you know, over a month of time that seemed like we've been in to where we, we really have come together as, as a basketball community and coaches uh, in terms of, of learning and guys like Jamie Shaw and other guys who are doing things like this, I commend those guys uh, because it's what it's all about. So with further ado, man, I'm going to jump in here. And uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, just ask away um, and uh, we'll go from there. But we're going to talk about, we'll go ahead and, and uh, share this screen for you. A ball screen offense. Let's see if everybody can see this. Right here. Give me a second here. Everybody see that? We good? Okay, hold on. Get this in speaker view so I can. Kind of see it. Um, so we're gonna talk about ball ball screens and pick and rolls and reason concepts. And uh, man, here since I've been with Coach Davis and, and I've and I've been a lot of places, been fortunate to be with a lot of really good coaches, probably more than anybody else that I've worked with. I mean, we really, really, really put a lot of focus and emphasis on playing out of ball screens. And we'll get into it a lot of different ways. Uh, I'll show you just kind of some basic things that we do teaching our guys. Uh, but it's it's something that we do every single day in terms of skill work, knowing that it's a big part of our offense. Uh, when we're doing breakdown stuff or skill development stuff with our perimeter guys, uh, the one thing that I love with Coach is that he wants to make sure that all our guys, you know, whoever we can redeem a perimeter guy, and a lot of times it may even be some fours because we get in a lot of situations where we play four out, one in. All these guys are, are put in situations where they've got to learn to play off ball screens. And I think that's been really good for us. Um, I'll give you a, a great example. Uh, our first year here at Ole Miss, we got fortunate enough to go to the tournament. 
and our best player on that team was a guy named Terrence Davis. And the year prior as a junior, um, I think his assists for the year was like 66 assists for the year. Uh, and then this season or the season we had with us, he ended up having, I think, 114 assists and 91 turnovers. And a large part of that was we put him in situations, and he's a three-man, 6'5", more of a catch-and-shoot guy, more of an athlete, never really had been – allowed to be put in those situations where he had to make reads, play off ball screen, just different systems, doesn't make it right or wrong. But in what we did, uh, it really helped him. Fast forward this year, uh, he got a chance to make the Toronto Raptors team, a lot of it because he had improved in those areas where now he was a better decision maker. He can play, like I said, off ball screens. His number reflected it. And there was time even in this season, the NBA before the, the, the shutdown with COVID, that he had to be uh, their backup point guard, even start a game when Kyle Lowry was out. So uh, we do it every day, and we do it with all our guys. And uh, I used to kind of even have the thought and belief that, well, you got you to gotta try to get in your best player's hands in terms of ball screens. Because we all, at some point, offensively get into some, some ball screens. Whether it's late shot clock, maybe early in the break. Uh, but one thing with coaches really taught me, man, you know, yeah, we, we want to get our best guys that make the best decisions in it the most. But if we have multiple guys that can do it, uh, it makes you that much more diverse. Uh, makes you where you can you can attack the opponent's defense in multiple ways, depending upon who you want to get in those ball screens. And another another great example of that when we were at Middle Tennessee State uh, the last year or the year we beat Michigan State in the tournament. So right going into about five games going into the end of the season, our star point guard we're in a transition drill. He gets hit. It's like his third concussion. Rules him out. He's in the concussion protocol for the year because he had multiple ones. So now we got a backup point guard playing it. We get into the right before the conference tournament starts in Birmingham. The backup points is now starting point guard. He comes down with a horrendous injury, breaks his ankle out for the year. One of those ones that uh, like kind of like a Paul George injury. I mean, horrific injury. So now we've got to go to our six man, who's like a six five, really a three two, and he starts in the conference tournament ends up starting that game against Michigan State. We win that game. But a lot of it was uh, because all year long, all those guys had been put in these drills and these situations where they had to do it in practice and live situations. So now when that time was ready, even though he wasn't a true point guard, we could still function as a team and still have success. And if you see the stat there uh, over the last five seasons, just the numbers there in terms of um, scoring opportunities out of ball screen offense. And this is like one of those synergy stats, analytic stats that you could – you can look up, so it's not just me throwing numbers at you, but to uh, to be ranked in the top 15, three of those years at MTSU and the last two here at Ole Miss, kind of shows you just the emphasis we put on it. So therefore, you know, it's the reason why we spend so much time on it in our daily skill work and we do it so often uh, with all our guys. Hold on a second. Hold on one second, guys. Here we go. So how do we go about, you know, working on that from a progression standpoint? All right, so we'll go a, a lot of times starting the summer uh, as we get into the fall and we do a lot of our skill work. We go one-on-one -on -one skill work. We go two on those skill work, two on those skill work. We go three on those skill work, and then we'll eventually get into we go four on those skill work. And all of this is a progression that we get to where these guys get to where they, they learn how to play off of it just for themselves. Obviously, two on oh, now you got a, a screener and a ball handler, and then three on oh, you're starting to read oh, tag God. guys, yeah. four on oh, stuff, you start reading the whole floor. The one thing that we do, uh, with every single drill in terms of ball screens and working on it, we always want our guys to go against ball pressure. So it may be when I say one on oh, it may be where we're not doing something competitive as a live drill that we're charting and there's a winner and loser, but we have a manager or a coach putting pressure on our guys so they get used to having to handle against a live defender. Uh, so that's something that we always do. The other thing is we, when we start getting it, obviously one on oh, it's just one guy, we're getting a shot, we're working off different, different moves off of a ball screen. Uh, but as we start getting the two on O skill work, three on O skill work, and four on O skill work, then we always want to put multiple balls in the drills 
to maximize reps and time. So again, we only get a certain amount of reps, I mean, certain amount of hours uh, practice time. You know, we all do. So understanding that we want to try to maximize every rep. Uh, so again, multiple balls, you'll see when we do our two on those stuff, I'm gonna show you some film that in every drill, we're trying to get as many shots up and it's maximizing that time and reps that we have so we can, we, we, we can take advantage of everything that we do. Uh, the things that we talk about heavily and emphasize uh, in our one-on-one -on -one ball screen work, and as we progress along, as we get into multiple ball screen actions, uh, we want guys, man, to be efficient with their handle. And we tell them, don't play with the ball. In our league, in really good leagues, uh, there's great defenders. You know, for example, Ashton Hagens at Kentucky, one of the best on-ball defenders uh, probably we played against this year or in two years we've been in SEC. And there's good defenders in every league. Uh, but those guys, man, if, you, if, you, if you're not efficient with your handle, man, they'll just eat you up. And so we tell our guys, be efficient with your handle. Don't play with the basketball. The other thing we'll tell them, we go, we go start working on one and oh as we're building up. We'll talk about this and really emphasize it, uh, especially uh, when we talk about side ball screens. Stay in the pro channel. And what that means is right about lane line extended to about uh, close to the sideline, about probably within a – uh, two feet or three feet area, stand in a pro channel. So then, then you can either use the screen or you can refuse the screen. Give yourself two options. If you get too close to the sideline and that sideline becomes a third defender, guys can trap you. If you get too much in the middle, uh, unless you're trying to work on just true middle ball screens in the middle third of the floor, then your spacing is bad to be able to attack and play to the weak side or play with your roles. The other thing we'll emphasize with these guys a lot, get to your spot as quick as you can with as less dribbles as necessary. So again, the great defenders, timing of the play, you get to your spot, less dribbles as possible, don't play with the basketball. Now you get in a position where you can read what the deep defense is telling you. Now let's go make plays and, and, and play off based on what we're trying to accomplish and what the defense is giving us. Uh, once we get to, the, to that spot, now we say one dribble, uh, one just one dribble to get yourself set and allow that screener to get set, and you can read the defense. And the thing that we'll do a lot, and what I'll tell our guys a bunch is, you don't put the ball in front of the, the defender. So when we say one dribble move to let the screener get set, usually it's between the dribble, it's between the leg dribble or right behind the back dribble. So now, boom, balls is protected from the, the defender. I'm sitting there, I let the screen get there, and now, again, we can go play. Uh, we'll say it a lot, play slow to the fast. So you don't have to be the quickest guard to be effective in ball screens. But if you play with great pace and you play with great shoulder leverage, then you can be a, a guy that can really make plays uh, off ball screens, be effective, whether you're getting there scoring or you're finding your teammates uh, in those situations. And then from there, then we just talk about really reading the help. And that's where our 2 on 0 and our 3 on 0 and our 4 on 0 we get to where those guys can see that and feel that, but just make the play the game tells you to make. So in our 1 on 0 ball screen work, you know, we'll do a lot of things right off of side ball screens. We'll go side ball screen action, and then obviously everything we do from a side ball screen action, we'll do in the, in the middle third of the floor, too, in some middle ball screens. Uh, so we go soft, we work on soft hedge and shadow. So we'll get to a spot, less dribbles, one dribble, let the defender get there, and we tell those guys, turn a corner, get a piece of the paint, and we work on jump shots. Now, obviously, we can get a layup. We always get a layup, but on our one on, 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 on ball screen work, we're always getting a jump shot. And we're one of those teams that we're not, you know, uh, mid-range shots are not good in our offense. Coaches believe those shots are still valuable. So, again, a lot of our one-on-one our -on -one work in ball screens and even our other breakdown stuff, perimeter stuff, skill development stuff, we do. We work on some mid-range stuff. But we soft shadows, heads, and we want to turn the corner, get a piece of the paint, jump shot. We'll drive it one-on-one -on -one ball screens, pro channel, hard hedges. We want to pull back dribble turn the corner, jump shot. Uh, we don't see as many hard hedges in the middle of the floor. So again, that's, that is more of a soft hedge shadow where we'll turn the corner, get a piece of the paint. Uh, those teams that want to down the screen, the ice the screen, we tell those guys, hey, we'll get to the, we'll get, we'll stay in the pro channel, we'll drop that thing, one dribble, let the defender get there, refuse the screen, jump shot, all right? There are teams that will try to down the ice screens in the middle, same thing that we'll work on right there, middle ball screens. Uh, teams that want to go under, same thing, same principles, same ideas, same emphasis, all those things we just talked about. We'll work on going under, pull-up jump shot. Now, there's other things that we'll do as we progress and guys get better. Like, we may snake some screens when guys refuse it and ice it. 
Uh, we'll work on some splits. Uh, you're splitting the hard heads. Sometimes we'll work on, we'll set it, we'll come off a ball screen, set a second ball screen, and then play from there. And so there's multiple things that if you want to put into those, those uh, different scenarios that you can do it. These will be the basic things that we work on just in our one on one ball screen work. And then from there, as we progress, we'll go 2 on one ball screen work, and then we're just adding a forward, and then we're going to make the same reads. But now what we'll do is we'll also be able to incorporate passing. So it goes back to what I said before. We want to maximize every rep and every time that we, we get a rep in or just our time that we have. And so now we, you know, two on no ball screen work, uh, we're going we're gonna to add, we're gonna add the fact that we're going to either be passing with the, with the ball handler or with the screener. And we just kind of make that decision based on that particular day. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to show you just some, from, from film standpoint. Let me stop sharing here. Hold on. Everybody see that there? So right here, this would be our one on one ball screen. And we, you know, we normally don't save a lot of our, just our skill development stuff. So we had to pull some, some things, but you'll get an idea uh, in terms of just what we'll work on. And then we'll go some two on one stuff. So you can see that as well. Then we'll progress down to where we do three on one, four on one. And then we'll get in some live stuff as well. But our one on one stuff, as we talked about, this would be one of our managers. And we usually want these guys to really hit them and pound them and, and, and make it hard for them to get to their spot. Uh, you know, I'll jump in there at times. Um, but we really, again, we always want those guys to feel real ball pressure like they would in the game. Best, best way we can simulate that as possible. Hey, Ronnie, I see your organizer. I don't see the, the video. You see? Okay, hold on one second. Hold on, Gus. See it now, Russ? Hold on one second. Yeah, no, it's still your organizer. Okay. Hold on one second, Russ. You see it now, Jamie? Still the organizer. Just the organizer? Yeah. Oh, one sec. Oh, one sec. Do I, have to, hey, do I have to stop the PowerPoint? Um, Hold on one sec. Here you go. Did you see the organizer? Yeah. Heard heard the film though. Yeah. I apologize, guys. So. No worries. Does anybody on the stream know how to uh troubleshoot real quick? Help out? I think you gotta click the top where it says screen share and it should open up a different uh tab for it. Hold on one second. Chris Sauce, Avery University in the house. <laughs> oh, stop share. Screen At the top, there should be a few different tabs when you open up different things. Yeah, I see all those. I think the video should play in one of them. So the video in the organ is probably going to be in different tabs. <laughs> you just see, you just see the organizer now. Yeah.
Tell us one more time, guys. How we doing now? You see it now, Jamie? Yep. Sorry about that. No, no problem. No. So everybody, everybody sees it now, right? Yeah, you know, Jamie. Go. Yes. Perfect. Thank yeah. you, guys, man. Sorry about that. So this would be our one-on-one -on -one ball screen uh, work right here. So again, like we always want a guy going against pressure. You see our manager right here. So we're trying to simulate ball pressure. Uh, right here, you just see a couple of clips, like I was saying. So this would be the pro channel right here. Anywhere between, probably outside this lane line, it's about right here. We don't put necessarily uh, tape or, or, or anything down. We just talk about it. We show those guys and just we emphasize it. If they get outside of it, we, we, we'll, 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 we'll let them know. we we'll coach it up. Uh, but we want them to stay right in this pro channel right here. Less dribbles as possible. Get to your spot. One dribble, so behind the back dribble. Now let that defender get set. Again, we always have, even if this is our one or no, we just have a guy screening. This is actually one of our walk-ons, just simulating a ball screen, maybe a coach, maybe a manager or, or a GA. And then we're going through our progression right there. All right, so here we go. We got, we got a hard hedge. We got a pull back dribble. We get turn the corner. He probably can get deeper in the paint. All right. Same thing here. Pro channel. Get to your spot, less dribbles. We've got a lot of defender going against them, one on oh. Just like we talked about. If you want to add things, splits, different things that you may incorporate in what you're doing offensively, you can do all this in, in your one on oh skill work. So now what we'll do is anything we do on the side ball screens, we'll go right there and we'll do it uh, in middle ball screens. So again, now we're not necessarily getting to our spot, but we're still efficient with our dribbles, not playing with the basketball. Right here, reading the defender. Right here, the defender's kind of making him refuse it, making him refuse it the way he's guarding him. Change of direction, get deep, shot. Same thing here. Now we got a side ball screen. Again, get to your spot, pro channel, deep, right there. So again, now, so we've gone uh, one on oh, I'm sorry. So we now here we go two on oh ball screens. So we talked about. So now we just added, this is one of our post guys right here. We'll add the two on oh ball screen. So what we did there was just one on oh, really the ball screen was either a manager or, or a GA, or maybe um, in some cases, maybe one of our walk ons or a coach. Now we'll go into our two on ball screen. So now we've added another big to the, to the, to the, to the drill. And now we're going to also add pa uh, passing to the drill. So again, we always want to maximize each rep. We're trying to get multiple shots, multiple balls involved, uh, just so we can, again, we, we, we can make use of all the time that we have. So again, the, the progressions and the reads and the emphasis and the coaching points haven't changed. We just added two guys into the drill. So here's one of our bigs, sprint to your spot as far as the bigs, but guard wise, get to your spot. Give that guy time to get set. Hard heads, pull back, get deep. We, at this point, we've got a coach passing it to, to the big, but we got the, the passing involved. Same thing. Really good behind and back dribble, allowing that forward to get set, letting the screener get set. He goes underneath. We under. This will be our under working on our jump shot. So now here we're working on icing. He'll get to a spot. Now in the ice, we always talk about one change of direction, drive it, drive it, working on jump shot. But now in this particular case, again, we're always working on passing. We're always trying to maximize the reps. Now we've told the, the ball handler, you're going to be the guy making the pass. So now he gets to work on what we would call a pocket pass. He's still going to receive a pass from another player. And so, it's, again, we get multiple balls into the drill, multiple shots. 
he could very well be shooting it right off of it, and we'd have a coach passing to the big. Two on no ball screening right here. Again, get to your spot. And that's another thing that we would do. And again, we just add things because there's multiple things that we can do in all these scenarios and situations, but this would be just us working on a, on a slip screen. So again, uh, and one thing that we always tell our guys, never turn your back on, 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 the, on the court, on the, uh, on the goal. Because at any point in time, you're coming off ball screen, don't let the defender eat you up so he make you turn your back. And again, one of the biggest, we do work on a lot of slips. So now you can see the slip screen, but also you can see the flow in terms of making Euros and, and just being able to come off of it. We'll work on multiple things, but it's a progression of stuff. So all these guys get so used to being a playoff ball screen. Again, so anything we do in the middle of the floor, We'll, I mean, on the side of the floor, we'll do in the middle of the floor as well. So, again, all those different things. Now we may just be, be flipping the screen. We have multiple things. He split it. And those guys get to where they just read it, but they're going against defense, some form of defense, every rep. Again, right here. Again, just showing you can add multiple things in different scenarios that you want to put in, in terms of what you guys may be doing with your offense and how you're using ball screens. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can attack the defense. So right there, let me see, I'm stop sharing for just a second and go back to our. Okay. So we'll go back to our PowerPoint right here. Any questions right now? Yeah, hey, Ronnie. Yeah. A lot of that stuff was all uh, off the bounce. You do stuff off triple threat too. We you know that's a good question. Uh, we don't. We 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 do at times. Like for example, we we may get into um, we may get into uh, a lot of our ball screen. A lot of times, it may be off some handoffs. Uh, it may be off uh, Russ. It may be off uh, where we may pass and set below. We we get into it multiple ways. We don't probably do that as as as, as much as we do off the dribble because we just we end up getting into a lot of our actions, uh, whether it's in the secondary. Um, now we do when we do that, Russ. We may do it out of a a, a way within offense that we get into it. So for example, we have uh, uh, what we call snap action. So it may be where it's a back screen, ball screen. So in that case, you do catch it and you, you get, you, you're waiting on that back screen to occur and then a ball screen occurring. So again, you had not put the ball on the floor yet. So now you are playing with a, a triple threat position and you may just maybe giving your guy time to get set uh, just with, with your footwork and, and pivoting and those things. But we do a lot off of, off of ball handling and a lot of it is, too, what I found is that it just really helps those guys become better ball handlers. Uh, but we do, we do a little bit of both, but we do mostly, um, mostly, mostly, mostly off the dribble. So right here, so we'll go 102 ball screens. I mean, 102 ball screens. We'll go 200 ball screens. And then we'll go 300 ball screens. Work. And so when we do that, all we'll do is we'll add another perimeter guy, and then we'll get to where we start reading the tag guy. So where, where the guy is reading. The long roll, or is he, or he's staying with the shooter. So we'll go, we'll go from that progression from one on oh, two on oh, to three and oh, and then eventually we'll go to four on oh ball screen work. We're now same concept. We've got a big, a guy handling the basketball, two wings, and then we read the whole floor. Uh, and I'll show you that real fast. And then from there, then we'll get into a lot of two on two actual live competitive stuff with our guys team wise. We go back and, and now I'll show you the. Three on oh, four on oh, two on two, three on three, four on four. Okay, so we, 
to go right to All right, so now we're in our three on O work right here. So you've seen the one on O, two on O. So again, all we'll do is we'll add a third defender here. We've got a big, we've got our guard. All of all the all the emphasis and all the teaching points are the same. Now we've added a, a, another perimeter guy, and a lot of times we, you know, we call this loaded ball screens because we got a guy below the screener. So now it's just three on no work. So again, get to your spot, stay in the pro channel, one change direction, let that screener get set. And then what we'll do is we'll have, again, this is three on no, because this is just our managers right here working. We're not in a competitive live situation where there's a winner or a loser, and we're statting it, but we're getting these guys just to be able to read, read the defense. So again, he's, he's, he re, kind of, he didn't tag it. I mean, he didn't, he didn't help on the long roll as much, but the read is just, he's seeing that guy tag, he's throwing back. So now again, we're working on passing. And we've got multiple balls in the drill. So that'll be our three on over. So this will be our four on over. So we go now, we've added two perimeter guys, a big, and now we don't have a true big in there because we're doing just, this is just guard. We're doing our guard, uh, guard work right here, skill development stuff. But now again, the same thing. Now we're trying to do the same thing, but just read the entire floor. So again, you see these guys are so kind of, really programmed and, and, and taught, you know, where to be at on the floor to come off ball screens, uh, getting to your spot, less dribbles as possible, one change one change direction to get set, now playing slow to fast, playing with low shoulder leverage. And they're just, again, just now you're reading. And what we'll do, guys, is man, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of dictate it right here. I think maybe coach is doing it. I may be doing it. Whoever, I, may, I, I was in the drill, but we may say, hey, one of these two guys is going to tag. So you, you, you may tag the long road, uh, the long road guy right here. So now he got to read which of these perimeter guys is going to be at the play and who's open. Or we may say you may stay here and pinch on the long road and you just make that read. There it is. Good pass, good read, shot. Same thing here, all at the same reads there. And just those guys. You know, you can see here DC was a really good player for us. I mean, he's he's looking, and we get those guys really with their eyes to be able to see the whole floor. So that'll be our two on and our three on And then from there, um, what we really really get into is just after we progressed and we've really uh, broken all that down and rep that and rep that, then we go. Two on two live, three on three live, three on three live, four on four live. Now it's competitive with our team. And we don't have a lot of two on two live on here, but I'll show you some three on three live, four on four live. And again, it won't be the prettiest because it's practice, but you'll just get an idea. So we may go three on three live. We may have four teams to three. We're, we're saying best of, uh, first team to seven. And however, we divvy the points up. Uh, that's how we determine the winner. But now it's competitive. And now guys get a chance to go against it, against real live competition within our team. You know, all the stuff we worked on before, so now these guys repped it out so much and just one on oh, two on oh, three on oh, stuff. Maybe icing it, he still used it. I mean, now they're playing. So, again, everything we do on the side ball screens, we do right in the middle. So, again, now we've got a, a middle ball screen with a guy in the corner, and we're playing from there. You just see these guys get so used to reading the defense that it's been good, been really good for us. Now, and, 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 and Russ asked this question. So then what we'll do is, and again, these are some of the basic things, and you guys may have different ways you get into ball screen action. And so what we'll do from there, and, and, and what you can do is you can kind of now simulate it and put it into where it's maybe a, whether it's even a shell drill, uh, just obviously so you can work on defense. But if it's a way that you get into your offense, uh, by ball screens, then you can kind of incorporate that into your, your three on three or your four on four. And so this year, I mean, just a drill, we just coming off a pin down, passing it, getting into a ball screen. All the emphasis are the same. And now to ask your question, Russ, now we are playing it with, 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 the, with the live ball uh, without having to put it on the deck first and we're playing from there.
But again, we, we do a lot of, lot of work. We're just sitting below here, back screen, kind of UCLA, right into the ball screen action, and we're playing. So you can see we here, and that will be our three on three. Then we'll go from there. We'll go now. We may go to four on four. And again, it's just every day in practice, man, we, we work on it so much that these guys get really comfortable being able to play off of it and make reads and, 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 and put it into game, game situations. We may go four on four now, so you'll see kind of like the drill you saw before, but now we got a competitive game. and Everything we do is competitive as a winner and loser. So he sees just like that before in the three on zero. He sees that guy helping, makes the play, and then we we will play from there. Give me a couple more. So again, now he probably got pushed too much. He let the defender beat him up, eat him up a little bit. Got too close to the sideline. But again, now we're playing four on four live. He's probably playing against the ice. Worked on that pass, and we're playing. You know, so we do it constantly. Now, then what we'll do is just to give you one more kind of idea how we can incorporate it, or you can incorporate it in terms of you know doing it as far as drilling the work and, and live competitive stuff. We'll go four on four on four. So right there, we were standing in a half court. Probably uh, at that point in time, you scored, you kept it, uh, depending on how we were, how we were playing the game. But then we'll go sometime. We'll go four on four on four. So this four may play against the Grays, maybe playing against the Reds. Whoever scores it, and if they score it, obviously they keep it. If you get a defense rebound, then you're coming back on the half court or playing against another defense. But it's, again, working on ball screen stuff, real competitive stuff, trying to play it in live game situations. So now we're 4-on-4, four four, and they're playing. See the slip. He missed the shot, so Red got it. Now they're coming down, advancing it, playing it. And then this will be us getting right into – ball screen action here. And that would go on and on and on until that was a winner. Ronnie, you said that you're charting stuff during this uh, drills. Yeah. What, what stats and what stuff are you specifically charting uh, during each of these? Yeah, so it, so one thing we do, um, I'll let this play all the way out through, so this would be the end of this kind of just series, and this game probably would have went on and on and on. But the thing that we, hey, we'll chart, we, we, have, we chart, we chart um, a lot of things, Jamie, in terms of just within, you know, we may be charting how we're scoring the game. Um, so, for example, you know, we may be playing a seven and, and, and a stop is a point. Obviously, the score would be, a, you know, depending on how we're scoring the points. Uh, we're charting that. We're charting uh, offensive rebound may be worth three points. Um, a block may be worth two points. So, it just depended on that within that particular game. And then, but then overall, anytime we do anything, uh, Live and competitive, <clears throat> we have a defensive breakdown chart. So any um, missed box out, uh, bad closeouts, no high hands, uh, get split from the top. We don't split. We don't. We don't help off uh, on ball side corner threes. Um, no communication. No mid lines. So we chart those. I wish I had that graphic to show you. So we chart those things in anything live that we do. And at the end of practice. We have a, a GA that's just charting those things. So at the end of practice, uh, right when practice is over with guys on the baseline, uh, a coach is going to call out all those. So it may range from, you know, in a two-hour practice, it may range, Jamie, from eight to ten defensive breakdowns to 20 defensive breakdowns, and they got to do five push-ups for every one of those breakdowns. Then on the flip side, on the offensive standpoint, we'll also chart uh, assists. Uh, we'll, we'll chart um, – you know, obviously points, we'll chart uh, reflections, um, rebounds, um, uh, screen assists. There's a series of stats that we'll, we'll chart there as well. And we keep that uh, running daily, weekly, uh, season, monthly, season uh, total. And guys see that on our board and our practice every day. And it works out. It's unbelievable how it's worked out for us to where uh, usually the guys, uh, this the top five of that list of our point system are the the guys who end up being our starters uh, or our five best players. And coach will use that. So it's been great for us um, uh, to where guys come in, coach, why am I not playing as much as the next guy? And we can sit there and show them, hey, the point system, you know, as they say, numbers don't lie. Man, hey, you're not, you're not, you're not rebounding as well as it. So we chart, man, and it's something that I've, I've really learned and, and, and see a lot of value in. We chart every single, you know, thing on both ends so that when guys, number one, 
they recognize that practice matters because coach dictates a lot of playing time uh, and a lot of rotations, guys' rotations are based on those two particular things that we chart every day. And then they can actually see it. They have some a numerical value that they can see how they stack up against their teammates when they want to say, hey, I, I think I'm better than this guy. But then again, we can look at the numbers and see, you know, from a production standpoint, uh, and even a defensive breakdown. Because at the end of the day, you know how it is. It's the guys you trust defensively, especially late in games, are the guys you're going to play. And so that defensive breakdown is another thing that, that, that coach can show. The guys who are usually at the bottom of that, the guys that's playing the least on our team. So we try both those things to answer your question. But then also, like we said, within the competitive games, we'll dictate, you know, for that particular uh, segment or that particular practice, how are we going to get to that win, that winner or loser? Appreciate it. Now I'll go back real quick, I mean, uh, and just show you kind of this one last uh, piece, and, and then I'll just open it up to some Q&A here. Um, yeah, so. and just last stat, and then I'll just kind of break it down why. Go back to this PowerPoint real quick. So this last one, you know, we kind of went over like the three on ball screen, the four on ball screen work, the two on two, three on three, four, four lives. So the progression is, 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 is kind of what we build up into. And, and this, this, this stat, and uh, I guess want to put it on here so you guys can see it and, 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 and you can kind of understand why we do it so much. I know I've emphasized it, but the two numbers in red, just for the purposes of, so you can kind of get an idea. Um, and this is all broken down by you know, synergy, how you, what you, how you score offensively, uh, the, the, the 412 pick and roll ball handlers, 17% of how we score, and then the 168 pick and roll pop, where we either coming off of a hitting up the screen guy on a long roll, or if he just end up popping. So you add those two numbers up, and it's you know close to 25%. So probably a quarter of, of how we score offensively is by ball screens, uh, which is a high number. I, I think it's you know we were looking at the other day the staff, and it's it's up there in the top, you know, I think you know top 15% of college basketball. So you know, it goes back to a guy told me a long time ago, you know you you are what you emphasize, and so. This is, it, who, this is who we've been as a team. Uh, it's something that coach really, you know, in terms of how we play, that he, he, he wants, to, want us, want, wants us to, to be. And so as we talk about player development, um, you know, whether it's during the season or off season, we recognize we've got to get good at, at, at being able to play off of it. And we've got to have multiple guys that can do it. So it goes back to before, you know, that, that we, we, all our guys get an opportunity to, to, to come off of them and use them. And it's something, like I said, constantly, daily, that we do, and then we're always tweaking it as well. Like you saw, like we we may get into where you know we 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 we'll, we'll, do, we'll do different things. You know, obviously based on teams that we play and, and personnel and scouting reports, and so we're always kind of constantly adding to 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 that repertoire, so to speak. So the things that we work on, those are the, the basics. But then we'll also get into a lot more different things that we add that we can see that we can take advantage of just during the course of the season, or based on guys that we have that have strengths in certain areas. Any questions, Jamie? Coach, uh, Chris Sauce, Avery University. Yep. Was there any team that you guys struggled with in your uh, ball screen offense? And was it because of a coverage or personnel or? Yeah, good question. You know, a lot of teams now, you know, do a lot of switching. So they just try to take you right out of your ball screen. You know, if you get, they got good enough bigs that can switch on a guard, then you kind of, they, they kind of can neutralize you, be able to be able to create help and be able to play, whether it's a Euro or it's a, Throwing back, and right. now you create long closeouts. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you're trying to draw two guys, draw help, make a play, whether it's, you know, for a big, you can get an immediate layup, or you're trying to get it kicked, you know, to where you can create a long closeout. So when, when we t play teams that can switch effectively, then that presents a, a, another, you know, set of challenges. Now, what we, we, what we try to do, and we weren't as good in the post this year, so we couldn't take advantage of maybe a small on a big, mm -hmm. throwing it inside. But what we did, and, 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 and we kind of as a staff, uh, had to adjust in this respect. You know, we had really good guards. And so what we would do a lot of times is really try to get those guards to attack the bigs, maybe space mm -hmm. the post. So when we recognize guys were switching, we may go one pass and then pass back, boomerang pass, mm -hmm. remember that kind of concept. And then we were playing downhill. Uh, mm -hmm. We played, um, I guess it was Florida, and they were switching one through five. So 
they had the big fella that was from uh, Virginia Tech, and he wasn't a great, you know, great defender out in the perimeter. And so we had a kid named Brian Tyree who, who could really, really score the basketball. And we get in ball screen situation, get that mismatch. And we let him either go attack. And same thing, Georgia did the same thing. Uh, right. We let him either go attack if he felt he can go right away or he would, man, pitch that thing and get right back and then go play for so he can get down here. And then kind of, again, forced a long closeout on a big to small. So he kind of – he had the advantage in that situation. Mm -hmm. Another thing, you know, when teams ice ball screens, you know, the teams that do a really good job of that – uh, Auburn probably in our league is, is, is as good as there is um, at doing it. And so there's some different things that where, you know, we may come off and you saw that pocket pass that we make, we'll make that pocket pass. Right. Uh, uh, and, and then we may come back with a hard hand, dribble handoff. And so now, you know, again, we, we're trying to create advantage that way. You know, one thing we, we, we've started trying to do more and more is be able to like snake those ball screens and then get to the middle of the floor and play against mm -hmm. the big that way. That's something that we were going to really try to concentrate on this off season. But those, those are the, those are probably the two things that, they kind of affect us and, and, and make us have to really game plan the most for in terms of all the stuff we do with ball screen. Okay. Thank you. Coach Hamilton, Coach McCain here. What's going on, Coach? How you doing? Man, good. Um, so if they do a good job of icing one side, if you reverse the ball quick enough, doesn't it make it really hard to ice the other side? Yeah, if you can get the ball, that's a great point. If you can get that, and that's what we – you know, whether we're either – depending on who we, we're trying to kind of keep the – get the ball to in terms of, of, of allowing to have the opportunity to, to play with the basketball, um, we're either trying to maybe come back with a hard dribble handoff, like I mentioned. And sometimes, you know, like even at first, like we'll say these guys, you know, it's, you can kind of give the defense too much credit. Like, you know, like we can still come off ball screens if you're good enough to get to it. But if they're just going to make you, make you refuse it, what we'll do is we will. We'll try to get it to the big and quickly reverse it. And now – he may hard chase it with a ball screen to the opposite side of the floor because now that guy who was guarding him, you know, has to kind of sprint from a, from a distance to be able to get to a second ice, you know. And so that's something that, yeah, we, we kind of those two things are the ways that we've kind of attacked it the, 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 the most. Um, you know, we may end up getting to where we may, you know, we may get like a big, uh, so we have a side ball screen and we'll have a, 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 another big in the short corner. And we'll have two guys opposite the ball, I'm saying. So we'll have to go free throw line, extend the weak side, and a guard that's in the corner weak side and have a big and short corner. So, again, like kind of like you were saying, we, we would pocket pass or get it to that big that's in the ice. And then he, he either can just drive it, obviously, for a shot or, or drive or shot. He can either one drill pull up or he can drive it for a shot. But then he can get it to, 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 to the other side of the floor, sprint, sprint to a ball screen, or he may just have uh, – the other, the, you know, the other big sprint up there. And what times, a lot of times what we'll try to do, Deshaun, man, we may try to flip that screen. We'll get to where we start flipping screens now. So they're trying to really ice it really hard. We may try to flip it. And now we can, again, we can kind of get to the middle of the floor. So we'll do some different things just based on, you know, how good teams are, are in the ice and, and how committed they are to it. And, and just kind of with our personnel as well. Thank you, Coach. All right, guys, go ahead. It's an open floor now. Uh, any type of questions that you have for Ronnie or any type of uh, stuff you want him to go over, explain more, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, Coach. Coach Khalil here. Um, talking about personnel, do you recruit players to fit your, your system there, or do you just try to find the best available player? Yeah, that's a, that's, a good, that's a good question. You know, we have – probably more so recruited to our system with our bigs more so than probably our guards, to be quite honest. Uh, because as much as we use ball screens, we, 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 we've been our, at our best when we've had skilled bigs that can do two things, one or two things, and if both of them, great. But can either shoot it or can be able to drive it or just play off a dribble, I should say. So, you know, for example, when we are at Middle Tennessee State, um, you know, we, we played Michigan State, and that was just one team, but it was kind of synonymous of a lot of our teams. That year we beat those guys. Our starting five man, I think he made the second most threes on our team. He was a 6'8 guy, really kind of a stretch five. And in that particular game, and they struggled against us because we could pop him, and he made, I think, three or four threes in that game. But, but really kind of all along those teams we had, lat latter in that, that, that latter, the latter part of those teams before we got to Ole Miss, we all had skilled bigs that can pick and pop, shoot, or drive it. Uh, whether it's a kid named Reggie Upshaw that we had, 
or Ja'Cory Williams, who wasn't really a three-point shooter, but he was a great mid-range shooter, so he could pop one dribble. Uh, we played with a kid named Nick King that transferred from um, Alabama, who was really kind of a three. We, we, we pushed him down, so to speak, and played him at the four, but he was a perimeter-oriented guy. So, you know, it put guys in, 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 a, in a lot of situations where, again, they were having to guard a big, whether they were trying to get back off a hard hedge or whether they were trying to switch and they were exiting out. They just had to had go guard a guy that could go play on the perimeter. So, like, we're out recruiting Coach Davis for bigs especially. Man, the first thing he, he's going to ask is, can they shoot it? And if they can't, it's hard to get him to really go on a guy uh, like that. Now, the challenge that we have at Ole Miss is that it's, it's, it's a little harder to find those guys, maybe those six, seven, six, eight, somewhat undersized skill guys because you still got to have some size and physicality in this league. And so that's kind of been – in one respect, we haven't been as effective. So if you saw those first numbers where we were like second, third, or I think third, fourth, and fifth at TSU, and then maybe like 12th and 13th, which is still high in terms of coming off ball screens, that dip a little bit has been because our bigs have not been as skilled. Now, from a guard standpoint, uh, we're going to go recruit the best, you know, talent, uh, knowing that, you know, you got to have some true point guards, guys that can play off the dribble. But we think just through our skill development and all the things that kind of we just – talked about and showed and, and there's some additional stuff that we, we, we do and focus on and, and emphasize as well that we can get guards better, uh, you know, at playing off the dribble and making plays and making those type of reads and drilling enough and repping enough and emphasizing enough to where, you know, again, they can be effective in what we do. And, you know, I think I may mention before, but it's a great recruiting tool too, you know, to answer your question, you know, for example, so like, TD, who I mentioned earlier as a three-man, that is an assist, assist almost doubled. And so now you know how it is. You go out recruiting and all the guards, you know, think that, you know, they want to be point guards or they want to play with the ball in their hands because they got to feel like they got to show that in the, for the next level. And so we can point and say to them, like, man, everybody in our offense is going to have chances to play with the ball in their hands, play off ball screens. Uh, so to answer your question, man, kind of a two-fold answer uh, for our bigs, recruit to our system, uh, kind of first and foremost, the guards, you know, we're trying to get the best available guys that we can get. Uh, Ronnie, when you're looking at these different types of screens and all that kind of stuff to go into, do you have different calls that you have for the different aim set or different areas on the floor stuff, or is it just off a of pure read from the guards? Uh, as you say, I lost you for a second. You said we have different calls for how we get into them. Or, or no, the calls for the angle of the set, different calls for where you want to get to. Do you have di different calls for that type of stuff, or is it just pure read of the players? Yeah, we, we don't have necessarily calls, but we – and so, like, in our one-on-one -on skill work, or especially when we get into our two-on-one screen, so there's a part where we're, 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 we're coaching and teaching our guards. There's another part where we're coaching and teaching our bigs. And so the one thing, if you come into our practice, you'll see how kind of exact coach is. So when we say the pro channel, man, those guys get drilled into that so much that they know what, what spot on the floor we want to play out of. Again, we always tell them, hey, we want you to be able to use it or refuse it. So there's a part of spacing that that comes into play. The bigs – uh, in the same token, are really being taught and in, 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 in great detail how to sprint the screens, what angles, left over right, you know, the width of their feet. All those, all those things are emphasized as we're building up into all the progressions that I showed you. So when we start getting to it, whether it's right out of the break or if guys are sprinting to a screen and we're getting into it just in some multiple actions, they know the angles that we want to set and they kind of know the area that we always want to stay in. Now we'll have some calls to where we have specific sets that we get into, and now, you know, through through through, through those you know plays and designs, you know, they may come at different angles. But again, even in those scenarios and situations or plays, we drilled it and taught it to where they know the angles and and and, and where we're trying to score out of it. So to answer your question, yeah, not necessarily calls unless it's the plays, and then in those situations, the plays they know because of what we practice, and we just drill it, drill it, drill it in terms of. And this is exactly kind of where we want you to do it, how you do it, and then we drill it and wrap it to where, you know, it, it, it becomes habit. Ronnie, with your uh, role, man, are you teaching them to reverse pivot when they open up, just like traditionally, or do you want them to sprint out of it, or how do you teach that? Yeah, so, so yeah, so as you come off, you know, it, it's a great question, and Coach is, is really, really detailed on this, right? So as they come off, we want to snap their head and sprint and touch up and get and get a piece of the art, okay. get a foot in the art. I mean, that is huge. I mean, we'll say that. I mean, they'll, 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 we'll, we'll repeat that and say that so many times to where they kind of get tired of, of hearing us saying it. Because we want those guys to have long, I mean, 
like by the, the definition of the word, <laughs> long roles. Because if we can create that, because um, you know, obviously it, it causes the, the weak side defenders or whoever responsible for that guy to help longer. But also offensively, we we're always telling our guards to get as deep as they can, as deep as they can, and play and play with that long roll guy as long as they can. And so you know, you'll see it. I mean, you see it in high school sometimes, or even college guys. You know, they'll, they'll 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 long roll, mm -hmm. um, but they sh they they kind of you know they end up getting to just the mid post or they don't really long, and so it's, it's easier to guard. And so to answer your question, yeah, we snap our heads, uh, with vision on the basketball, we tell them to get a piece of the arc. Then the only time it'd be different if 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 at some point like we get to a side ball screen, and which we work on a lot of slips, and the read there is this, Chris. So we get to a side ball screen, uh, screener sprint to his spot. We tell him always check the inside of your shoulder. If you don't see the defender, it's an automatic slip. And so in that case, there's no snap in your head. You're just sprinting to the right. block and you're sprinting to the arc, expecting the pass. Hopefully guards see it and we can get things out of that as well. Right. Thank you. Hey, Coach Hamilton, uh, Stephen Lewis, St. Chris, St. Christopher School in Richmond, Virginia. Appreciate you doing this. Um, going back to your practices, uh, defensively, when you're doing your live ball screen with the team, are you telling the defense what kind of coverage to do? Or are they kind of on their own? Or are they doing what you normally do in the game? How do you guys handle that? Yeah, good question. Uh, so when we're doing our one on oh and our two on oh and our three on oh, um, or more so our two on oh, because one on oh, um, and even the one on oh, we're telling them what to do. Uh, and that changes a little bit. So, for example, like we're doing one on oh, we're just perimeter bigs and we're on half courts. And I got the perimeter guys. Uh, I may say, hey, we're going to go side ball screen, you know, work. Um, you coming off the hard hedge uh, every time and we're practicing those shots, you know, or I'm going under this time. But it, it may be a case where we're going to go and I'm still on the back. I'm, I'm, I'm on the back as a live ball defender. And I say, read me. So we mix that up sometimes. But then we go to two on the work where when it's, it's our managers uh, and we're getting to do that or three on oh, then we're usually telling uh, those guys you know, kind of what to do. And it just, it just depends, you know, on practice. Um, now, when we get in, in our competitive stuff, um, then we for sure are telling our defense, you know, because we're working on defense as well. Uh, so we may be working on, you know, how we guard on the side, which, you know, which can change, you know, doing, you know, based on you know, personnel, scouting report. Um, so when we go offense, defense amongst ourselves or against ourselves, the defense is being told, for sure, you know, how we're going to guard those particular situations and the offense got to adjust. And, and I go back and I, I, I go back, you know, even with the 2 on 0 3 on stuff, there's times where it just varies, you know, like it may be, uh, maybe we're going we're gonna to do this every single time. Like in the one, the one 3 on 0 clip, we may say, we may want to practice that throwback pass and the guy hitting the guy filling up behind them. And so we're saying, okay, this time we're doing this every time. We may go back and like, for example, in the 4 on 0, we just may quickly, as that drill is going on, between ourselves, you saw me in that drill, I'm pinching, I mean, I'm tagging, or you you stay, you know. So it just depends, you know, it just depends. But it's all kind of part of, number one, you know, depending on what we're trying to get out of that drill or depending on if we're trying to get those guys to kind of get through some progression and reads, it just depends. Gotcha. Thank you. No, no problem. Hey, Coach Ham, uh, Danielle Robinson here, Iowa State. Hey, appreciate you sharing with us. Um, man, did a great job. Hey, w one thing I want to ask is um, – more about a program, a program question. So what are some uh, few core values that you guys took with you from Middle Tennessee that's there at, at that's helped you at Ole Miss that's like withstand the test of time regardless of what league you, you're in? Yeah, man, that's, that's a great question, uh, D-Rob, man. You know, that's what we tried to do and we're still um, – you know, we talk about culture all the time. I know a lot of people throw that term out there. Uh, but the core values uh, that, that we believe in has helped us is there's a several. You know, one of them is that the coach is always going to coach his best player the hardest. You know, when I heard that, uh, I'm sure a lot of us watched The Last Dance, and I, I hope I can say it exactly like it was mentioned uh, in the piece, but uh, – I think it was Phil Jackson, I forget who said it, but he said the greatest compliment you can give a player is to coach him, you know, coach him hard. Or the greatest respect you can give your best player is to coach him hard every single day. And so that's been a core value of us in terms of, you know, Coach Davis is not afraid to coach his best player the hardest. 
And <clears throat> what we've seen is on our really good teams, if the best player accepts that, that kind of challenge, then we've had, you know, that's been when we've had our best teams. Uh, the other thing is from a core value standpoint is, and we, we talk a lot about, you know, the we over me. And so, and, you know, all the things that we do, you got to, you got to maybe sacrifice, uh, you know, some personal for the greater good. And from the standpoint of if we win, we all, we all, you know, gain from that. And so like, we, we would use this example with Terrence Davis, the kid I referenced earlier. And so TD was our second leading scorer uh, last, but two years ago, um, wasn't our leading scorer. Actually kind of scoring, maybe went down a tab between his junior and senior year, but his assist to turnover ratio went up, his field goal percentage went up, uh, you know, um, his defensive, the way we graded him, all his defensive things improved. And so his numbers, which everybody kind of looks at first in terms of, you know, a barometer of, of how well you're playing, went down, but his game improved. But more importantly, man, he took our team to the NSA tournament. And so we thought, like, when we talked to NBA teams, that's the thing that, like, they really valued about him. And so, yeah, he could average 20. We, make, we don't make the NSA tournament. We don't have a good year. I think, you know, maybe he didn't have the opportunities that he has. You know, so we, we talk about that a lot. Uh, and then the other thing that, that's been a kind of a core value for us, D-Rob, is, man, everything, you know, small things are big things. And so what we do is we want to hold these guys accountable in, in everything that we do. And coaches say this all the time, like, man, small things are big things. And so if it's a guy that, you know, like we had, for example, we had a guy, man, was, was, was late, you know, I'll give you a perfect example. You know, we, had, we, were, we were Middle Tennessee State. We beat Michigan State. Everybody's riding high. You know, man, you can't imagine how many text messages you get. You're on cloud nine. You're preparing to play Syracuse. We go to Sweet 16. Uh, man, one of our guys misses our, our film meeting the day before, I guess the day before the game. Two minutes late, our starting three man. Coach doesn't start him in, in round of 32. We, we lose the game. But he was, he, 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 he was going to make sure that the culture and that idea of a small, every small thing, every small thing is a big thing. Um, because his philosophy is, is, is if you let small things remain small things and the big things are going to happen. And so we flip around and we're here at Ole Miss and we, we, we carried on that kind of, that, that value and that philosophy. So again, same thing, man, guy here, hey, he's, he, he's late uh, for a meeting with coach and kind of didn't, 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 you know, didn't see that eye, wouldn't meet, you know, we left him, man, we go to Florida, we lose. Uh, starting five man, but we come back after that, and he comes back and he has his best practices for about three weeks, and we go and we have a four game winning streak. So you know, that's something that we um, that we uh, that that that's been big for us. It's a term and a phrase that I think has really kind of made a lot of sense for me personally as a coach. You know, seeing that like I mean, we just not going to just put things under the rug, and then we eliminate it. You know, as soon as we can, obviously you coach guys different and things of that nature. But, man, with that overall guiding principle, man, it's really helped us, uh, you know, in terms of accountability and, you know, team. And it's something that has been been, been big for us, you know. So um, that, that's some of the core values that we, we've been able to kind of instill in all our teams or try to instill in all our teams. And I think it's helped us be, you know, successful. Great. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Coach, this is Gary Williams. How you doing? Thank, how you doing, Coach? Good, good. Hey, uh, do you ever teach your players to turn their back on a ball screen outside of the three-point lane? I know I've, I've learned from some coaches that obviously inside you open up, you're following the ball, but outside you get a lot quicker if you slip, especially on a slip, if instead of opening up, you just slip and, and catch the lob. Have you heard that before? And if so, have you guys ever used that philosophy? Okay, so now you're talking about the ball screener himself. Yes, the screener. Okay, right. Yeah, so so it's 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 outside the three point line, and you're Correct. saying uh, he 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 recognizes a slip, and he's snapping his head uh, to try to long roll. Correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Correct. We we do not coach, and, and again, like we if if we see that, so the way we teach it is, um, 
anytime you set a ball screen and it becomes, we hope it becomes an automatic read with our guys is that as they're coming to sprint screen. Now again, right. it's a middle ball screen. It's a little different because, you know, you set it at an angle, but if it's anywhere to where, you know, your back is parallel with the sideline. So more of a side ball screen, even if it's a little bit above the three point line, anytime he doesn't see his defender on the inside of his shoulder, he's immediately slipping. And so usually, what we found is in those cases, the ball handler, you know, is going to be in the position to where it's not, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a, you know, a, a situation where he can snap his head, you know, if that makes sense, you know, so, yeah. yeah, so we teach those guys, man, just to, in those cases, when they read it, automatic read, you slip with vision with the basketball, and then, you know, then it's on the point guard to make the play to you if he's open. We, 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 we don't snap it when we're slipping to the basket. Uh, that okay. Asks the question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, now. Yeah. Ronnie, what's going on, man? What's up, Russ? Quick question for you. I, I uh, had the pleasure, or not so pleasure, of getting my butt kicked by Kermit Davis when he was at MTSU a couple times. But the thing I was impressed the most is I felt like y'all's pace and physicality was better than ninety-five percent of the teams we played against. If if a random person is walking through. Ole Miss practice, what are the three things they're going to notice that you guys emphasize the most? Yeah, you said it. I mean, we try to, and it kind of goes back to uh, D-Rob's question as far as the core value, man, you know, the core value of, of, of practice, you know, and just how much emphasis we put on that is, is one of the biggest things that <laughs> we try to take from MTSU to Ole Miss. Uh, and, and to answer your question specifically, uh, I think if you walk into practice, you're going to see, um, man, we try to every rep, and Coach will have this on the board, um, every rep have, has a life of its own. And so meaning that if you don't take advantage of that rep, then you've wasted, you know, a rep you can't get back or you wasted time. And so in, 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 under, under that mindset or under that, you know, that, that, that kind of a, you know, thing that we always talk about, Man, we want to sprint and go full speed every single rep uh, that we do. Now, you saw in the clips, you know, sometimes you got to coach out of guys. And there's, but I would say that if you come watch practice, I don't care if it was uh, June 8th and we're doing a 4 on 0 uh, summer skill workout, it was all October the 12th and we're getting ready for, you know, leading up until the season starting. Man, the, 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 the pace of practice. Uh, man, it's full speed. And so I think, you know, what it does is it, you know, obviously you're getting guys to play really hard. Uh, you're trying to get guys to be competitive. Um, so it goes back to what you said. We've always tried to pride ourselves on, on just, just you know, those two things and then being physical. Um, I think the other thing, if you walk into practice, the attention to detail. And so I know Jamie asked the question, or you have calls. <clears throat> and, and, you know, I heard the question. I had to kind of remind myself, like, it's not necessarily calls, it's just that man, when, when we teach and when we coach them and what we emphasize, the detail, we try to make it so specific that when we get in games, you know, guys really execute, you know, and they can really, really know exactly what, you know, what we're teaching and, and, and be able to, you know, again, again, pace plus execution, uh, you know, leads to, you know, we feel like, man, that's, that's having success. So, number one, I think you're going to see great pace. Uh, number two, the attention to detail. And then number three was the accountability. I think those are three things. If I could give you three that you would see if you walk in practice. And the accountability part goes back to, again, the stats. And so, man, we chart every single thing. And it's, it's been the best, um, you know, learning experience for me because, again, man, you know, numbers don't lie. You know, and we've been there where, you know, practice and, God come in, coach, man, I think I'm better than so and so. Yeah, I think you're better too. But man, you know what? <laughs> He's got twice as many rebounds as you over the last 30 days. And so that's why you're not playing. And so uh, the accountability part of, okay, man, starts with the, the actual just rep in terms of this is what we expect, the pace, the attention to detail. So if you don't do that, then we're doing it again. But then in, 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 in saying that too, we start, you know, getting competitive. We chart it all. So now we can back it up and give you you know, numerical evidence of why. And then what happens was, is that, man, like I've said before, those guys realize that practice, you know, it, it, it matters. 
you know, I know we hear that <laughs> uh, Al Iverson practice, you know, but it really and truly, man, guys understand. Like, and so I, I've seen this happen, Russ. And I got, got kind of got on a tangent. I've seen guys because they know that we chart it, and they know that 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 it, that it, it, it matters. Uh, and, and one of the kind of the, the best things that, that that our teams I think have shown or been able to do is we'll have guys who maybe in November and December maybe not play, maybe be the tenth, eleventh guy. Um, but man, sometimes we've had guys by January, February will be in the rotation or even starting because you know there's there's, there's never a point where you know the first five guys uh, are just going to be there because they earned it through November 1. And again, it goes back to, like I said, accountability. So if you continue to show in practice and your numbers change, and that's what coach will always tell you. You can change your role. You can change your role. It's up to you. And so then if you, you know, by, by, the, by, the, by the charting and accountability part, guys realize, man, like I, I may be the 10th guy, but, but I know that it can change just based on, you know, what we emphasize in those things. So I would say pace is huge for us, huge for us. I used to love recruits. Come watch us practice. I would say, man, we can just get you on campus. You're going to see that we're going to be able to get them better. The pace, uh, attention to detail, and then accountability are the three things I think you, you, you would see, you know, um, right off the bat, you know, watching us practice. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. Hey, right, quick question. You might have covered this already. Um, you talk about you got stat a lot of stuff in practice. Do y'all stat like intangible stats as well, like setting screens and scoring in red plays? What was the last one you said? I know I set the screen. You good? I'm sorry, my dog started barking. No, no, you good. You good. <laughs> um, do you, do you chat like um, who sets screens, who generates scoring plays, not necessarily who scores the basket? Yeah, you know, <laughs> we, we do a, a chart. Man, I, I wish I could. Uh, I'll tell you what, Jamie, if you give it to me who, who's on here, I'll email you our, our point system. Uh, for guys who can see it in our defensive breakdowns, uh, if you if you if you if you, if you if you can, or just I tell you what, just, yeah yeah yeah, I just give you my email and I'll send it to you. Uh, yeah. But to answer your question, uh, Dre, um, we chart assists, uh, and one thing I tried to get Coach Davis to implement into that point system was screen assists. Um, you know, so you know, like for bigs, man, sometimes you may get a guy open just because you set a great screen. Now we did it for a time, and then he. You know, he, 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 you know, he wasn't committed to doing that. But we do chart extra passes, and that's a huge thing. So, like, a lot of our drills, and we may get into where, like, we may go, um, you know, we just may go through, like, uh, some, some left-hand, right-hand passing, and we may incorporate that into an extra pass. So we always, you know, or we'll do some different things. We may come off a ball screen. And even if you saw, like, i give you an example. Like, we may hit the Euro guy, and if we had a 4 and 0 for example, we may say make the extra pass. So, so we, we use that as a term that was, that's, that's, you know, that's synonymous every day or, or something that's consistent every day. So we chart extra passes. We chart assists, obviously. Um, we used to, at times, we charted screen assists. Uh, but we do, if, from an intangible standpoint, we, we, we do, we, we chart 50-50 um, balls. So that's another one. It wouldn't be a scoring opportunity, per se, but be an intangible deal. Uh, deflections, you know, which is, you know, which is an intangible piece. Um, you know, from a defensive standpoint, defensive breakdown stat or uh, in that chart, we, 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 we stat non-communication. So that's maybe not a you know, physical thing. It's an intangible thing to create guys being able to communicate. So there's some, definitely some things that, that we do chart that's not just, um, you know, the, the normal just things you see in a box score. But I'll get that to you so you can see it. Thank you. That's big time. I think we got time here for a couple more questions, guys. You want to go ahead and jump in? I have a question. Okay. Kevin, what's going on? How y'all kind of doing the corona uh, pandemic? How y'all reaching out to kids? Uh, how are we reaching out to our players? Yeah. You know, we have um, – it's a great question. I mean, we, we have um, – uh, weekly meetings with our guys through Zoom platforms like this so we can see all of them. Um, and we've done different things where we've had some speakers come on. Uh, we've had some former players who come on uh, and may just may, may have a you know few words for two or three minutes just to kind of uh, change it up, so to speak. 
we've had even where we've had some breakout rooms with the guys, three or four, with an assistant coach, and you know, may throw a question at them or uh, ask them about something, you know, from how they're working out or different things like that. Uh, we've shown some video, you know, uh, maybe a clip, motivational deal. So we we've done that because that's the hardest thing right now. I know a lot of us facing in terms of trying to stay connected with our guys when we are, you know, physically apart. Um, and then, you know, just a day to day, we've got a great academic advisor, Kevin. And so, you know, that was the other thing that we were, 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 were worried of is how do we make sure these guys do well academically. And so we break up our guys, uh, you know, each assistant coach is responsible for about three or four guys. So, you know, it's about three or four guys we're touching every day because they usually got something to do from an academic standpoint. Um, and then, you know, we're just texting them and, and, and just, you know, that whole piece, that's one thing that we, we you know, we value, you know, you put that word value, and we value just the relationship that we have with our players and just trying to pour into them the best way we can when we're not, you know, physically together right now. But we've done a lot of the Zoom stuff, uh, and then we just kind of kept up with them, you know, through phone and FaceTime and things like that. All right, great. Uh, to my guy, Steve, say hi. I'm going to tell him, man. He's been great for it. That's my guy. All right, Coach. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Got time for one more. Anybody want to jump on? Good stuff. Ronnie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for coming on here. Uh, great stuff today with the I mean, soul, the reads and everything. Really, uh, really informative, really learning. Uh, anything you want to close us out with? Anything you want to uh, know or uh, how these people can get in touch with you? Yeah, yeah. So um, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to put it in the chat real quick uh, so everybody has my email. Yeah. Let me do that real fast. That's probably the best way because I'm going to end up having to send it to you via that way. That way. And, uh, and if you want my number, um, man, I'll be more than, more than happy. I know some guys already got it. Um, but that point system, if you want that or if you want any of the stuff that – you know, I was able to show today. Just reach out to me, and I'll get back to you. If it takes me a day, please don't don't get mad. I'm I'm gonna I'm get to you. I promise. Um, but I, I just appreciate uh, the opportunity to share a little bit, and 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 then I also appreciate just 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 to, the opportunity to grow myself. You know, some of the questions you know that you guys ask are great questions, and I just I just appreciate guys like Jamie. I've said this before on some other zooms and things like this that I appreciate guys like him being able to connect us. You know, especially in this time where we. You know, again, we were having to kind of be uh, what's abnormal for us coaches this time of year. You know, we all would be on the road seeing each other and these, just maybe talking to each other face-to-face. Uh, -face. But we wouldn't necessarily be uh, – we'd be in such a race recruiting-wise. You know, maybe scattered around. We're not really connecting from a basketball standpoint. So to be involved in this is truly a, it's an honor for me. And uh, and I just – I've said it before. I just challenge, challenge us when we do get back to normal, which this time is going to pass and we're slowly getting there us to continue to do things like this to help us as coaches grow because ultimately obviously you know we, we do it for our guys and this helps our guys you know as we can as we as we connect and we learn from each other and so I hope this is not something that's not lost when we get back in the normalcy of our day-to-day -day and we're running around you know obviously we got a job to do as far as recruiting um, but I just love the platform and uh, the last thing I'll say I mean if I can do anything for anybody uh, please reach out, you know, obviously uh, on anything today uh, and, and those those PowerPoints or the charts that you guys mentioned. But if there's anything else that I can do, questions, uh, please feel free, man, get in touch. Uh, and, and, and I'll be more than happy to do anything for anybody that I possibly can. Absolutely, Ronnie. Thank you again so much for coming on, uh, guys. Uh, reminder, uh, every Monday, uh, or sorry, every Tuesday at 10.30 a.m., Wednesday at 2.30, and Thursday at 2.30. Tomorrow will be the final one of the week. We've got Brian Graves of NC Central coming on. He's going to be talking about how to find your new within the co uh, coaching staff uh, once you're already on staff and everything and, and recruiting. Uh, next, we have an um, assistant coaches from Clemson, Kentucky, and Charlotte, I believe, coming on. Um, so uh, keep coming back, uh, Ronnie. Uh, please, uh, you know, obviously I know we're going to have in contact. We talk uh, every week or so. So, um, but yeah, guys, I, I urge you to utilize, you know, this platform, utilize the questions and bounce things off of one another. Just like Ronnie said, this time to, to everybody improve, everybody keep learning and everybody improve. So uh, keep coming back. Please stay safe guys. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time.